Okay, so this is really is going to be the last part of this video making this crate. So the first thing that I'm going to do here actually is to, in our diffuse map that we created in the last video, I'm just going to take off the ambient occlusion and I'm going to save that and then in Marmoset 2 what I'm going to do is instead of having the ambient occlusion in baked onto this diffuse map, I'm going to load it in to the actual AO slot down here. This is just going to allow Marmoset 2 to use this in a bit more of an intelligent way. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'll just finish off the normal map first with some of the detail that we create. So I've got my normal map here, I've got Endu 2 open again, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the wood and I'm going to right click on the wood. So this is just the wood, this isn't the wood that I painted the detail into, in fact I should save that. Uh, this is just the, the basic wood texture that we used. I'm just going to right click on it and go to duplicate, duplicate layer and I'm going to duplicate it into the normal map document. So that should appear in here now and the first thing I'm going to do is let's just put this to the top and I'm just going to use my levels to get this looking a bit more the way that I think it should look. So I just want to see the grooves really without too much of the colour data so somewhere around there I think is better. Once I'm happy with that I can hit convert in ND2 and then it's just a case of playing with these sliders until that looks right. So I'll change it to an overlay. I'm going to bring the fall off down a bit I think. I'm going to bring the softness down maybe to two and then I'm just going to bring the depth right down on it. In fact what I'll do is I'm going to save this how it is just so that we can see it working in Marmoset. Okay so it's, that's what it's doing now, it's bringing in that wood grain onto here. This is obviously way too extreme so we just need to tone this right down, so just bring the depth right down. Okay, maybe somewhere around here. Let's save that and see what that looks like. That looks pretty good. So we've got some of that detail in there now, and we've got some of the wood grain in here. But with these kind of normal maps, don't really don't go over the top with them. Uh, they look they start to look really bad if you if you you know if you try and do too much and add too much of the grain in. But that's just about right, it's just adding a little bit of life to that and making it look a bit more interesting and making it pop a bit more. So that's the wood done. Now we don't need any to do anything with the metal because metal is basically flat, I think that's fine how it is. What I am going to do is I'm just going to take the two layers of rust that I have and I'm going to create a new layer, actually put that underneath them and then I'm just going to merge those down. In fact, let's just duplicate that and merge those. Okay, and then we can duplicate that into our normal map as well. Just hide that so I've not messed up my diffuse. And that's it really, same thing. So we've got the the data of the rust in there. Let's just hit convert. And for this, I'm gonna make sure that I slant it down. And I'm going to make sure my size is really low for this, I think, so down at one. Let's maybe try changing the fall off to be a bit lower the softness a bit lower. I 
think okay. In fact, I might just try that now, so I'll save that. And I'm just going to take my albedo off for the moment. So I think you can see this normal map starting to work in there now. Uh, I think I actually want that to be a little bit stronger. So let's just increase the depth. Oh, well, I think the reason this isn't working properly is I need to set that to overlay. So there we go, that's more like it. Now I can decrease the depth of it, I think. There we go. Save that. And let's see what that's doing. Okay, and that's looking pretty good, actually. Uh, I've just got a bit of green there. I just want to turn off. Okay, that's probably enough in that normal map, so let's just put our albedo back in, like that. And now let's create our metallic and our roughness maps. So what I'm going to do is to take this diffuse, and I'm just going to save this now as a metallic map. So I'm just taking the diffuse and saving it as a metallic. So in our metallic, what we want to do is we either want to use values of zero or one, uh, theoretically. So things are either metal, um, so they have a metalless value of one, or they're not metal, so they have a metalless value of zero. The theory is that you should never have any values in between. Uh, so none of these values should, should exist in physically based materials. Generally, I'd go along with that, but in practice, I think you have to bend that rule uh, just a little bit. So in our metallic map now, um, what I'll do is I will take a mask. So I'm going to control click on the metal and I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm going to fill that new layer with white. Uh, let's just set those back. Let's just get rid of all of these layers. So anything in this area here is going to be metal and I'll just invert that selection and fill the other one with black. So if I save that now and bring this metalness map into Marmoset 2, then you can see now that our metal is behaving slightly differently in light. Uh, let's just bring the gloss up a bit and you can see that a bit more easily. The metal is now reflecting in quite a different way to the wood. I want to do a bit more with this though because I have the uh, I have this rust here. And what I want to do is I want to the rust shouldn't be metallic um, because it's it's eroded. So I want this to overlay in a kind of black color as well. So I'm just get that and I'll bring the output down. Then we've got this other layer of rust here. I've got some bits there that I need to clean up. And I'm gonna do something similar with those. So bring those down to almost black values. And we've also got this dirt that's over the top. So let's bring that right down. Let's bring the opacity up. Okay, so theoretically this should be quite correct now. In practice, I find that this is just too extreme. I think the rust, these big bits of rust look fine now. They, they're looking good. But like this dirt here um, and these patches of rust are just a bit too extreme with what they're doing to that metallic map. So I'm just gonna bring the opacity of those down just so that they change the metalness of it a little, but it's not so extreme. Like something like that. There we go, that's better. Okay, we might, we might tweak that a bit, but that'll do for now for our metalless map. So let's open our diffuse again. Let's do file, save as, and this time save it as a roughness map or a microsurface map. 
Okay, what we want to do now is if we go to Google and type in Marmoset 2 PBR reference, you should find a link to this web page. And at the bottom of this web page, you should find a reference sheet here that you can download. So if you download that and bring that into Photoshop like this, we can I can shut down that now. <coughs> we can use these to get some physically correct material values. So what I'm going to do is we've got an albedo value there, we've got a um, microsurface value there, and a reflectivity value there. What I'm going to do is just take my picker on. So I've got the wood, and I'm going to pick the microsurface value for wood. I'm just going to have a look at this in the colour picker and it tells me that it's 82. So if I come down now and get my wood, what I can do is I can go to the levels, so control L, and I can just set these around 82. So the output level I'm going to go from maybe 90, uh, maybe about let's say 75 to about 90 so they're all around wood values and then I'm just going to bring these levels in so that we've got a bit more going on within those values something like this okay so I'll save that and then I'll bring this into my microsurface slot in Marmoset 2. And you won't see an awful lot of difference here, but this wood should now have the correct, or very much, very close to the correct uh, reflectivity, well, reflect, correct microsurface value for wood. Um, and it is looking to me as though it's reflecting quite a lot like you would expect wood to reflect. Okay, so let's do the same for the metal now. So if we come back to our reference, I'm going to say this is closest to rough steel. So I'll have a look at the values for that. They're 177. So in my microsurface, I'm going to take that metal and I'm maybe going to go from 185 at the top and 170 at the bottom. Just bring these values in so we've got a bit more interest in that again. And I'll do the same for the rust. I'm just going to, again, I'm going to merge that rust down to something just so that I've got a clean layer to work with. And rust has a value of 45. So let's go to our levels on this and change those maybe from 50 at the top, 40 at the bottom. And the same for this one here. So 50, 40. And finally we've got that dirt that we put on. So the value for dirt is 56. Uh, let me just get rid of that again. So this is the dirt here. Let's go from 60 to, uh, let's say 50. Okay, so if we load that into Marmoset now, we've got, you can see that the metal is much shinier than the rust is, which is exactly what we want. And it's much shinier than the areas where the mud is painted in and you can see this is starting to look like quite a lot like mud now as well um, all that I'd probably do here is again I think the mud is just too strong for my taste so I'm just gonna bring down the opacity on that and probably on this rust layer as well to be a bit more like that I might have a little bit more dirt actually 
something like that. I think that's pretty much done. So just to finish this off, uh, I'm just going to go to in my render settings, I can turn my sky background on or off. It's quite useful to turn this on sometimes just to get a sense of how it looks in a scene. Um, but this should sit nicely because we've used we've used physically correct values for this now. Um, so I'm going to turn my sky off and then just within our camera you can mess around and increase the saturation a bit or uh, increase the or decrease the exposure whatever you want to do just to get a really nice render of this I like to turn the sharpness up a little bit not too high but maybe somewhere around there um, I think a little bit of grain can help as well And there we go, that is our crate done. Uh, just for a bit of a sanity check, let's have a look at our picture that we originally started with. So we're not ident we're not looking identical to this, but we are in the right ballpark and we've definitely got a nice approximation. Um, this would definitely sit nicely in a game environment now. Uh, I'd say the normal map actually on the wood is a little strong looking at this. Um, so I'd probably tone that down a tiny bit. But other than that, I think that's pretty good. So that's it. I'm going to leave it at that. And hopefully you pick something up from these videos. And good luck with making your own crates.